Welcome to the Pine Panel V2.4 update video. In this video, I'm going to go over all the cool features we've added. It's been a few months and some of these features have been around for a bit, but I'm going to go through everything since our last major update. Since we've added a lot of new things that makes our panel super competitive, especially in games like Minecraft now. Obviously, this video is only going to cover the big changes. There's been a lot of tiny changes. We've improved the speed of the panel. We've made the caching better. We've done a lot of things in the back end, but we'll go over the big things only, starting with file and folder searching. So let's head over to our server. And in the file section here, you'll see we have a brand new search bar at the top left. This search bar not only allows you to search for folders, files, it also allows you to search for a specific string within files. So a good example that shows it all is just searching log in the server. As you can see here, it brings up all these results. You can then see the highlight of any string that it matches. So this will search the actual string text of every single config file. It searches all the common files, like a .dat or a .txt file, for example, it'll search all of these. It obviously also shows all the folders over here and it shows any files that just match based on the name, for example. You can then click here directly to go and edit the file. All of those search results get cached while you're on the panel, so you can always search them again and it'll instantly show you the results while doing a search in the background. Another thing you may have noticed is on the right here, for all folders, we have a calculator icon. This allows you to calculate the folder size. This can take a bit of time depending on how many subdirectories there are, but for example, if we click over here, you'll see this folder is 214 bytes. This is a great way of just generally getting like the size of folders if you wanna see where large files are. Next up, we're gonna move over to another game, Minecraft. Our Minecraft offering hasn't been the greatest to be honest. We've kind of just offered a bare bones panel with that. That's changing today. We've already started work on a bunch of different add-ons, but to begin with, we're starting with a version switcher and a Minecraft mod pack installer with lots to come. On the Minecraft server, you can go to versions. This will show you the version you're currently running as well as give you the option to change to a large list of different Minecraft versions, including Bedrock and Custom Jars, which many hosts don't offer. A couple of cool things about this page is it automatically detects the jar each time you come onto it. That means that you don't actually have to use our version switcher. One of our biggest rules when developing any add-ons for our panel is I encourage all our devs to make everything bi-directional. That means if you go into the file manager here and upload your own custom server jar and then go back to this page, it will detect the jar and it'll change the panel features based off of the jar. So that means we're gonna have features like plugins for paper, for example. If you upload paper directly, come to this page, it'll detect that you're running paper, and then it'll give you access to features like the plugin installer, etc. Obviously, this is bi-directional in every single direction, including if you upload a custom jar over here, if you go through our installer. So for example, let's install paper. We'll do the latest version of paper. We'll wipe files. You can obviously select all your builds over here. Install that. And then there we go, we're running paper now. The actual install is done instantly by swapping out the server jar. Obviously, like I spoke about before, this will enable or disable different features on the sidebar here, depending on the, the type you change to. If you want to upload a custom jar, you can simply click to open your file manager, or you can drag and drop a file in here and then click install. This will do the exact same process. And if you are running a custom jar, it'll unlock a custom set of features for you, which will enable all of our panel features, just in case we don't know specifically what you're running. You can also change to Bedrock, which like I spoke about before, many hosts don't offer in the same panel. You can just click here and click to install the latest version of Bedrock. Moving on to the mod pack side, this is where things got very complicated for development, but thankfully we've really narrowed it down and made it as simple as possible. At the top, you have the ability to search mod packs, so you can obviously search the name. Then you can select the provider to search from. We have a large list of providers over here. You can view the mod pack by clicking on the name or clicking more information, and then you can install it by just clicking install. You can select your version over here. For example, let's do Fabric 1.4. We'll wipe the server files and then install the mod pack. Once the install process is done, you'll notice that it shows you your installed mod over here. From here, you can reinstall the mod if you ever want to refresh the files, you can delete it or you can click to view the mod. As I spoke about before, all of our features are designed to be bi-directional, which means now that I've installed a Fabric mod pack, if I go back to my versions tab, it automatically detects that I'm running Fabric. Moving on to some more generic features, we have our helpful little question mark icon at the top right here. This has been around for a while, but it hasn't really been used. We started to add a lot of content to this now, and we'll continue to add content as we create different tutorials and knowledge bases. Whenever you click this question mark icon, it'll show you a helpful pop-up with a video attached and a knowledge base button if we have one. This question mark icon is specific to whatever game and page you're viewing. So for example, I'm on the users page here, and if I click the question mark, you'll see it shows me the users overview tutorial. This isn't just limited to the panel pages, this goes down all the way into server files. For example, in this unturned server, we are in the Yeti folder, which is obviously a plugin and a config. If you click up here, for whatever reason, let's say you're lost and you don't know how to configure the plugin, it'll show you our Yeti overview video. 
This applies to everything, including if you're in the Yeezy translations file, for example, it would show you the same pop-up. Next up, we have database exporting and importing. From the database tab, you now have two extra buttons, an export button and an import button. This allows you to easily export your database file to a .sql file. When this is done, it'll get dumped in your file manager. You can then use the exact same file and import it back into your server. This is great if you want to move databases, for example, from one node to another or between different servers, or if you wanted to create backups of your database, so you can always restore it at a later date. Our backup schedule task allows you to also backup the databases automatically. If we just go to view templates here, we can configure a daily backup, for example. We'll do our daily backup. You can see here by default, we have backup database enabled. If we just edit this, backup database. So then next time the schedule runs, it'll backup all the databases and put them in the file manager before backing up all the server files. This means if you ever want to restore backup, you can restore it and then restore your database by importing it. And then finally, one of the other things that we added a while ago, but we haven't enabled for all servers is creating a subdomain. So depending on the type of game, you'll have an access, you'll have access to different subdomains. Here we've got pineserver.xyz. You might see a Rust one, for example, or a Minecraft specific one. But from here, you can create any subdomain you'd like as long as no one else has the same subdomain. So let's just say pine video and click create. Once that's done, this will create a subdomain specific to the type of server you're running. So if you're running a Rust server, for example, it'll create all the records needed to just use that. So you can send the subdomain around to your players and when they join your server, they can join by just typing the domain name in. This is the same for Minecraft, for example, and any games that support SWR records. This is great as some games like Rust allow you to use this for when users favorite your server. This means if you ever want to move location or change nodes within Pine Hosting, your subdomain will stay the same across all of those nodes and users won't have to re-favorite your server. It'll stay exactly the same on their favorites list.